welcome back to my channel and to another history walk around Colchester. In this video, I shall discover some graffiti which relates to a notorious murder, take a walk through the Hive, the town's old port area, and end with another of the town's execution sites. But I'm starting my journey here at the Church of St. Leonard on Hive Hill. There's been a church in the Hythe here since around 1190 and the first uh, vicar was appointed here in the year 1227 and his name was Nicholas. The current building dates are around about 1430 and there's evidence of the earlier church underneath the columns in the chancel. The church closed for regular worship back in uh, 1985 and is now under the care of the Church's Conservation Trust. I've been looking through the, um, the baptismal records for the church and found a couple of interesting uh, entries. The first was for uh, Isaac Pooley, who was baptised here on the 19th of January, 1783. He went on to serve in the Royal Navy and served at the Battle of Trafalgar on HMS Victory under Admiral Lord Nelson. He married his first wife here, Susanna Thompson, on the 13th of November, 1797 and also his second wife, Elizabeth Winch, on the 2nd of October, 1825. Isaac had a long life and died aged 89 in 1872. And he's buried at the Municipal Cemetery here in Colchester. Another baptism was on the 9th of February, 1817, to a William Gull. He went on to become a doctor and was one of the physicians who attended Queen Victoria. I've also found a naughty vicar as well. There are quite a few in the, uh, in the various churches around Colchester. This one was probably slightly better than uh, some of the others that uh, I've come across in terms of what he did. Um, his name was uh, Peter Walker, and he was appointed to the parish in 1557. However, in 1560, he was pilloried for telling false seditious tales. Must have been uh, rather awkward for him, being a, being a, a, a vicar. But uh, he continued to serve the parish until uh, 1570. Visitors uh, come to the church for many reasons, especially to admire the history and the internal decor. One of the, uh, the prominent features of the church is the impressive stained glass windows. And they were installed between around 1904 and 1917. And they were paid for by uh, James Noah Paxman, the same person who was responsible for building the uh, Victoria Tower on the town's town hall. Visitors also come to the church to look at its history, and in particular the, the events which occurred here during the siege of Colchester of 1648, because the church was used by the Royalists as their forward observation post, the church tower offering good views across the, uh, the landscape. The church was also used for, uh, for storing provisions before they could be moved back up into the town, and at any one point, around 60 Royalist soldiers and their horses were said to be in the church. However, the church was attacked by the parliamentarians on around the 14th of July that year. They attacked the, uh, the church with, uh, with musket fire and cannons, and the impact marks are still there to be seen today around the south door and the south porch. The south door here is probably the original door that was installed when the church was built back in the uh, 14th century. However, the, uh, the marks around the door and on the door itself is what visitors come to see. The larger holes were made by the, uh, the Royalist Army 
who were inside the church. They made the holes in the door so that they could fire their muskets through the door at any advancing parliamentarians. Around the 14th of July, the parliamentarians made their final assault on the church to drive out the royalists from this forward position. They fired their muskets and their cannons at the church and there's evidence around the, uh, the door and the south porch of where the musket balls hit and also the cannonballs from the falconet cannons that they used. When the parliamentarians arrived at the door there's evidence that they pointed their own muskets into the church and fired through the door because some of the pillars have got uh, musket ball impact marks on them. There's also an escratchion plate on the door. Uh, this indicated to the people that they could obtain sanctuary from the church. If someone was being pursued for whatever reason, perhaps they owed money or uh, they were accused of something they hadn't done, they could come to a church which had a, an escratchion plate on the door and obtain sanctuary for up to 40 days. They had this time in order to make peace with whoever was pursuing them or face justice. However, you couldn't obtain sanctuary if you were being pursued by the church or the crown. The right of sanctuary was abolished by uh, King James I in 1623. Around the side of the, um, the scratching plate are alternating symbols of three candles and three fishes. The candles denote uh, Jesus being the light of the world and the three fishes represent the Trinity, the three in one, Father, Son and Holy Ghost. I've really enjoyed having a walk around uh, the Church of St Leonard here at the Hive. It really is a fascinating old building and uh, incredible history as well, especially during the, uh, the Siege of Colchester. Just walked past on the left hand side there, the old Dolphin Pub. It's been a pub since the 18th century and uh, closed in 1939. It's now a, a private house. I'm going to take a walk down to the, uh, the Hive area of Colchester, the old port. See what we can discover down there. It's rather pleasant uh, walking around the hive and along the banks of the River Colne. Uh, there's been a port in this part of Colchester since around the 12th century. The previous port was just a little further downstream at uh, Old Heath. Cargo would be loaded and unloaded at the Hive, often onto smaller vessels to uh, take it further upstream. Uh, the Colne had a problem here with, uh, with silting up and in the 1880s uh, they actually dredged this part of the Colne so they can get larger vessels in which displace up to 325 tonnes. The column was dredged again in the 1920s and slightly straightened and this allowed vessels that displaced 750 tonnes to actually get along the quayside. As well as being a port area, the Hive was uh, an industrial area as well. There was a large gas works here um, in the early part of the 20th century. This made it uh, a target for the Luftwaffe during the Second World War and the area was actually bombed several times. But most of the heavy industry now is gone. There's just a few smaller industries left. Car breakers yards and, uh, and one or two others. But mainly residential now. And it's attracting new people to the area and reinventing and rejuvenating this part of Colchester. quite a number of vessels moored up on the quayside but they're mainly residential boats however there's one vessel here that's uh, a reminder of Colchester's um, maritime heritage and she's an old motor fishing vessel she's actually called the um, the MFV 1544 and she was manufactured in 1942 in Wivenhoe just a, a mile or so downstream she's been moored up on the cold now for best part of 20 to 30 years and is slowly decaying. 
There's still a couple of um, industrial buildings down here on the quayside. They add to the, uh, the character of this part of Colchester, and I really hope that they remain. But on my left hand side is the old, uh, the old customs house, and that dates from the mid 18th century. However, the building I've come to see is the former Swan Public House, because on the side of the building is a brick with some graffiti on it, and that relates to the story of a notorious murder. The story itself relates to the, uh, the Red Barn murders in Polstead back in 1827. There a man called William Corder murdered his girlfriend, uh, Maria Martin, and buried her in a Red Barn. They had arranged to meet with the idea of eloping to Ipswich, but Corder had other plans. So he murdered her and went to London, and he married a lady called um, Mary Moore, and they settled in Brentwood. Corder would have probably got away with it if it wasn't for um, Maria's stepmother because she had recurring dreams that her daughter was buried in a red barn. She got some of the villagers to uh, uh, dig up the floor and they found Maria's body. Corder was tracked down. He was arrested and taken to Bury St Edmunds for trial. There he was found guilty and sentenced to hang. Corder was hanged at Bury St Edmunds on the 11th of August 1828 in front of a crowd of around 20,000 people. As Corder stood on the gallows, he confessed all. He said the words, I am guilty, my sentence is just, I deserve my fate, and may God have mercy upon my soul. And at that point his foot support was pushed from beneath him, and Corder was hung. But uh, there was a film made in 1935 of the Red Barn Murders um, starring uh, Todd Slaughter. And it's a really good adaptation of the, uh, of the events and well worth watching. Just on my uh, right hand side is the, uh, the old Sun public house. It's been a pub here since uh, 1789 and it closed in uh, 1995 and has been uh, derelict ever since, well empty ever since. It's nice to see it being renovated and put, uh, put back into uh, to use. And just by the side of that is, uh, is Hawkins Road. Hawkins family were a very, very prominent family back in the uh, early 19th century and they were timber merchants and there are more memorials to them uh, up in St Leonard's Church. But I'm going down now to the, uh, to the, uh, the railway station at, here at the Hythe and it opened in 1847 uh, for goods but uh, didn't open for passengers until 1863 and uh, it's been used by passengers ever since and back in 2019 over a quarter of a million people used this station. walked a quarter of a mile to the west of uh, Hyde Station to the bottom of East Street because this is another of Colchester's former execution sites. Now we know this because of a, a quarter session record from 1374 which relates to the lease of some land to a Nicholas Morkin. The entry also states where exactly the, uh, the piece of land was and it states that it was at the end of uh, East Street where the gallows used to be. Now the fact that the, uh, the, uh, the entry mentions the gallows is probably quite significant or not. It may indicate that the, the place was notorious and the gallows were used often, or it was just a, a local landmark by which to uh, measure the location of a piece of land. But the, uh, the gallows on, the, on uh, East Hill was the only mention of a gallows that I found in the history records of Colchester. They may well have been another, perhaps to the west on the London Road, 
or maybe people, people were uh, hung from trees as they were in other parts of the country. But this is the only known location of a former gallows in Colchester. And with that I end this video. Thank you so much for watching and look forward to seeing you next time.